हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू दी जे सी कनेक्ट सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी शेयर स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ प्रिशियस कॉन्क्रीट बीम and we were solving the problems over to calculate the shear strength of precious concrete beam in the last session also we had solved a problem to find out the principal stresses or the quantity of shears developed in the precious concrete beam okay so as you know that in the principal stresses there are two types of stresses developed in the concrete one is compression one is tension that is f minimum and f maximum okay and as i told you we have to concentrate for the tensile stresses because as you know that concrete is strong in compression okay but when the tensile stress is developed in the concrete those stresses leads to the dynol cracks in the concrete so avoid that to avoid that our intention should be to reduce the f maximum the maximum stresses or the tensile stresses develop in the concrete okay so today again we are going to discuss how to calculate the principal stresses in precious concrete beam so i'll read the problem here a concrete beam of a rectangular section 200 mm wide and 60 50 mm deep again it's a rectangle cross section of 200 mm wide and 650 mm deep is pre stressed by a parabolic cable okay here the cable profile is again parabolic located at an eccentricity of 120 mm at mid span and zero at support okay if the beam has an span of 12 meter and carries udl of 4.5 kN per meter find the effective force necessary in the cable for zero shear stress at support section for this condition okay for this condition calculate the principal stress we have to find out the principal stress is density of concrete is 24 kN per meter cube so it's a similar type of problem what you have, what we had discussed in the previous session <coughs> so again it's a rectangular cross section with a cable profile parabolic <coughs> but one thing you have to observe there is a small change and it is very and which is very important here find the effective force necessary so we have to find out the effective force means the p we have to find out the effective pressure force p necessary in the cable for zero shear stress see this word is very important at support section so whatever the shear stress is going to develop in the concrete to make that shear stress is equal to zero what force required in the cable or what quantity of force we need to apply in the cable that force you have to find out okay so because of that what will happen the shear stress in the beam will become zero or to develop the shear stress in the beam is zero not i am not talking about principal stress i am talking about the shear stress tau v okay understood so next we have again according to the given details 
सिक्स फिफ्टी एम एम डेप्थ ट्वेल्व मीटर स्पैन केबल प्रोफाइल पैराबोलिक डेप्थ और द एक्सेंट्रिसिटी एट मिड स्पैन इज वन ट्वेंटी एम एम एंड एट सपोर्ट इट इज जीरो एंड दिस बीम कैरीज अ लोड ऑफ फोर पॉइंट फाइव किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर एंड लास्ट दे आर गिवन एज द डेंसिटी ऑफ कॉन्क्रीट इज ट्वेंटी फोर किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर क्यूब मीन्स हियर वी हैव टू एड डेड लोड ऑल्सो हियर द फोर पॉइंट फाइव किलो न्यूटन पर मीटर इट इज ओनली लाइव लोड डेंसिटी इज गिवन मीन्स और इट इज नॉट मैंशन इंक्लूजिंग और दिस लोड कैरीज डेड लोड प्लस लाइव लोड नो इट इज नॉट मैंशन सो वी हैव टू एड सेपरेटली द सेल्फ एट ऑफ द बीम टू दिस लोड so for that you have to take the density of concrete as 24 kN per meter cube okay so we'll start with the solution now so we'll first of all we'll note down the given data <coughs> so b is given as 200 mm the d is 650 mm okay and <coughs> the eccentricity is 120 mm okay and the wl is 4.5 kN per meter the one more important is tau v is equal to 0 here tau v is equal to 0 okay so here now first we'll calculate the dead load so dead load of the beam Is equal to 0.2 into 0.65 into 24. So we'll get it as 3.12 kilonewton per meter. Also, the lie load is given as 4.5 kilonewton per meter. So the total load is. Seven point six two kilonewton per meter. So total load carried over the beam is seven point six two kilonewton per meter. Okay. So now again, <coughs> so I'll just draw the sketch here. Spanish twelve meter. Okay. So therefore, the reaction is W L by two. So W is seven point six two into L is twelve divided by two is we get it as forty five point seven two kilonewton. So I'll check one second. Seven point six two into Well, two over two. Yes, forty-five point seven two kilonewton. <clears throat> okay. Also, PV is equal to P theta. PV is equal to P theta. So that is P into theta is four. E by L, so E is one twenty. Okay. So this value will get it as zero point zero four times P. PV is zero point zero four times P. Hmm. So therefore. The design shear V is equal to R minus P V. R minus P V. So R is forty five point seven two minus P V zero point zero four P. Forty five point seven two minus zero point zero four P. So that is V. Vertical shear. Total the net shear that is summation of all the forces that is reaction in upward direction and the component of the precessing force downward direction so p minus r minus pv okay 
so again we know that the shear stress is v a y bar upon i b okay so it's a standard equation for shear stress tau v so for rectangular section we know all, already it is tau v is equal to 1.5 times v upon bd okay so it is given that you have to equate or you have to take shear stress equal to zero and we have to find out what is the effective precision force required to make tau v is equal to zero so i'll substitute here so tau v is equal to zero 1.5 v is 45.72 minus 0.04 p divided by b is 200 by 650 okay <clears throat> so by this you have to equate is equal to 0 so we will get this value as 0 is equal to 0.527 minus 4.615 into 10 raised to minus 7 p. So therefore, we we'll get p is equal to double one four one point eight three kilo newton. So we get this value of p. So this much force. the effective precision force is required to generate zero shear stress in the concrete to generate zero shear stress in the concrete to generate zero shear stress in the concrete okay hmm. so now so again we have the principal stresses f is equal to f1 plus f2 divided by 2 plus or minus half of square root of fx minus fy square plus 4 to v square okay so this is regarding so we'll substitute back again so here is again fx is p by a that is One one four one point eight three divided by area is two hundred by six fifty. So it is eight point seven eight newton per m square. And f y is as usual we have zero. F y is equal to zero. So we'll substitute back. So that is f one is eight point seven eight. Plus zero divided by two f x plus f y plus half of plus or minus half of that is f one comma f two half of square root of two v zero. So please, hello, right answer again. Two v is equal to zero to make. To be one, make shear stress equal to zero. So we will get F one is equal to eight point seven eight newton per m square, and this will become zero newton per m square. So understood. So this is very important. We have got the maximum that is 
this we have got it as 0 Newton per mm square means there is no tensile stresses or principal tensile stresses develop in the concrete because we have got we have calculated the value of fx with respect to p correct with respect to p and this p we have to calculate we have calculated with respect to shear stress is equal to 0 so automatically what will happen so there will be no tensile stresses in the concrete so there will be zero tensile stresses in the concrete so there will be only compressive stresses develop these are two other principal stresses develop okay so ultimately we got to know that so by equating so if you know the value of p if you know the value of p so if this much precessing force is developed in the concrete so because of that the shear stress will become zero so how it will affect how it will affect i'll if you want i'll explain okay so we have the beam section here like this okay and like this so in the shear what will happen it will develop the diagonal cracks the concrete wants to split you want to separate so because of that what will happen we have to push that into opposite direction we have to push that we have to push that segment or that material into opposite direction so what is happening here we are utilizing or we are developing the precessing force in the concrete to make shear stress equal to 0 so automatically what happened so this whatever the force is generated because of this p that try to push or try to keep this concrete in single form don't not allow to split because splitting means what tension so we are we have got that the effective uh, or the tensile stress is in the zero so there will be no tension in the concrete so this whatever this f1 we have got that will try to compress the concrete in single unit that will not allow because we do not have any tensile stresses we have only compressive that is 8.78 which is developed because of this p which is developed because of this p and we want the zero what we have got this is even because of this p so there is no tensile stresses developed in the concrete so ultimately our beam is safe to carry shear because of the pre-stress calculated to equate shear stress equal to 0 so this you have to understood which is very important okay so this is regarding today's session okay thank you very much